I'm Traveling John, and I'm going to travel and sketch. Join me on the adventure. We're continuing our travel and sketch adventures through Europe. We visited Copenhagen, Leiden, Paris, and now we're going to spend some wonderful time in the beautiful city of Barcelona. Thanks for joining me again in this travel and sketch adventure to Barcelona. And the last vlog I did was celebrating the Gloria facade at the La Sagrada Familia Cathedral. And uh, I finished the ink line sketch as you can see. And the next process is going to be to add color to this. And that's what I'm going to be doing in this vlog. I've copied this. I've included it in my software, um, my software program on the computer and I'm going to be in the process of doing some special effects including a watercolor sketch with it and uh, we're going to go into that next. But before we go there I'd like to explain some of the things I'm going to show you in the vignette of photographs that I took when we were there at the Sagrada Familia. So uh, the outside in the last uh, Blog, I showed you the outside photographs and I showed you the nativity facade and the passion facade. They were both very different in terms of, of course, their theme and also the style. The nativity facade was done way back when Gaudi was alive and uh, that is more of a sculpture that was uh, accepted and uh, uh, appreciated at that time. And the passion facade, which is more modern, is done in more of a modern style, as you probably remember from the last vlog. And it really does emphasize the severity of the passion and what Jesus went through. So, um, the inside of the cathedral is totally different from even those two. And in this case, the inside does not show hardly any sculpture pieces of people. Instead, it emphasizes uh, nature, which Gaudi loved God's creation, and it all, and, you know, even the pillars that go up to hold uh, the cathedral look like giant trees with branches spreading out. So as you look at these photographs, you'll appreciate both the, the, the glory of light that God gives us through all the colors of the stained glass, but also the beauty of the architecture showing the, the celebration of, of nature and what God's created. So that's, I think, what Gaudi had in mind. And so the next uh, thing you're going to be seeing is the photographs celebrating the inside of the cathedral. And then right after that, I'm going to start doing the ink. I'm going to start applying the color to the ink line sketch. So I hope you appreciate or enjoy both of those.
Okay, so we're going to start. <clears throat> this is the black and white line drawing that I did. And um, I did a watercolor, uh, I'm going to say a pencil watercolor sketch for behind it to apply the color. And that's it right there. <clears throat> I'm going to take the black and white off so you can see it. I little colored pencil, a little water to give that uh, textured effect that I was hoping for. Um, thing is though that it's uh, I like it 75% I've already tested it and prefer that so I'm going to take it down to 75 uh, there we go that's a better color rendition and I'm going to start off by working on the steeples of La Sagrada Familia and I've already made paths so I can choose those elements of this sketch and uh, I'm going to choose that. Uh, whoops. There we go. Make selection. And I normally like to feather the radius at three pixels and to have it anti aliased. So, there you can see that little white ants are running around the selected area. And I'm going to make a layer over that and I'm going to call that tan. Oops. And I'm going to fill in that area with the color tan that I think will work well for this. So I'm going to go down right in there. Okay, I'm going to fill that and that layer I'm going to fill that with the color. Fill with the foreground color normal. But it's at normal but I want to change it down to color so that I get all the different feeling of the watercolor uh, below it and the textures uh, and yet they're tan now instead of that color that I didn't want. So that's that part. Now I'm going to proceed to do some other. I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on again so you can see the effect. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on those birds because they're not blue. I want them to be white. So again I've created a path. Birds. Make selection. And I'm going to make a new layer for those that's going to be called the birds or just birds. I'm going to fill that with white. And I'm going to change that layer from normal down to a hard light and I'm going to reduce down uh, how strong it is from 100% to 80 because I don't want it to be stark white. I want it to have a little bit of feeling of that uh, uh, background. Deselect. Okay, so I did the steeples, I did the birds, and the next thing I want to do is these little uh, diamond-shaped windows that are uh, on the tower and I don't know if they're windows but it sure looks like little windows that, that are like stained glass that might let light into those steeples. Um, but again I'm not sure if that's what it is. It could be just little mirror reflections but regardless I have, um, I have a path for that and it's called diamonds. And again, I'm going to create a new layer for that. Why don't I put it right above the birds? Okay. The new layer is going to be called diamonds. And it's already being selected. In this case, it's just going to be normal, so I'm going to fill it with a, coal, a gold color. And, oops, 
I should have changed. I'm going to cancel this because I should have chosen the color before I went this far. Uh, that's not gold. That's more gold. A little darker. A little more hue in it. Okay. There we go. Hit. Fill. And not white, but foreground color. So I put the little windows in, so to speak. And the next thing I wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, is work on the lines in the sky because right now they're very dark because it's done with the ink line. And I want to subdue them, but I also want to add color to some of them. So this is going to be a little tricky, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the magic wand machine, or sorry, the lasso tool. And uh, right now it's set at 100. I want to change it down to 200 uh, pixel. Uh, and that just gives it a soft edge. And I'm going to start down here and I'm going to give it sort of a bird flight flow around the steeples. And it's 200. Remember, it's a very soft edge at 200 pixel feathering. So, so I've gone around the area. I'm going to go down. I'm going to go, sorry, to the ink line area. And I'm going to choose those little black lines by going up here and putting my, uh, uh, choosing the um, um, move tool. And then I'm going to go down to my, uh, um, my um, keyboard and I'm going to choose the arrows. I'm just going to click one down and one up, which will bring it right back in the same position. I've just moved them a little bit to select them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill those in with the blue that I want them to emulate. And there we go. So I'm taking those black lines and I'm changing them to the color blue. Fill foreground. So now you can see how much softer those lights, those lines are. They're more of a blue gray instead of a solid black, which is better. But now I, I, uh, I don't want to lose the definition of those lines going through the color. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, take the magic wand tool, not magic wand, lasso tool, and I'm going to change it to 100 pixels instead of 200. Feathering. So this isn't quite as much feathering as the last one had. And um, I'm, whoops, I almost grabbed the wrong thing. Here we go. I'm going to start down here in the bottom left. And go up a little tighter to the steeple fruit. All the way around to meet it back. So now, as you know, I'm, I'm still on the black line. I'm going to choose those lines and they're colored. Okay, so I'm going back to the move tool. I'm going to go back to the keyboard and go on bottom arrow, top arrow to select them. So I've selected them, but I'm not going to do anything on that layer. I've just selected the lines, but I'm going to go down to the color and I'm going to copy that part of the color. So I'm going to edit, copy, and then I'm going to go back up to the black line or the, that, that layer that's called black line. I'm going to edit and I'm going to paste special in place those lines. So you see how much lighter it got? See how much lighter those lines got? Okay. now. Let's call that, uh, oh, Skyline. OK. 
Okay, so now I'm going to, to multiply that, which will intensify that effect. And that may be good, but maybe I want more. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate, duplicate. In this case, I'm just going to duplicate the color. There's different ways of doing that. That's better. I think I'm going to duplicate it again. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna, that's, that's the effect I wanted. Light out here, but more colored lines in here. Not black lines, but colored. Better hit save on this. So now I'm going to lower these lines. Okay, uh, merge down. And then I'm gonna merge this one down. To save that effect. It's all on the skyline. If I take that off, you'll see what's below it. It's just an intensifying effect of the, the what I was hoping for. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be working on the fruit that is on top of the steeple. So we're going to start off with the pears. I'm going to get closer to the pears. And I got a path for the pears already. And now I'm going to color them. And of course, pears are in the yellow family. Some green in it, but we're going to start off with yellow. Okay, let's get some color in here. And the selection tool is running around it. So even though I have it right over the pigeon, it's not going to... Oops, I forgot something. I forgot to make a layer for that. And it's going to be underneath the black line. New layer, pairs. Okay, now let's do it again. Now, as I was going to say, uh, I can put the tool up there. It's not going to show anything because the selection tool is re restricting it right to where I want the color to be. Get some yellow pairs in there. So as I mentioned in the last video, uh, the real beautiful thing about this artwork that they have on the top of La, La Sagrada Familia is that they sculptured the fruit and then on top of that they carefully placed the tiles, uh, in the colored tiles. It's so much a style of Gaudi and to use colored tiles. Uh, and uh, they did a terrific job of that in this, in this part of the cathedral. Okay, let's get a little bit different yellow in here. A little more orangey yellow. And I'm also going to put some green in here too because some of the pears had a tinge of green uh, on them too. Okay, let's just get a little green in there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, to make it easier on me and for you to see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to duplicate this layer. 
And I'm going to call it pairs and I'm going to call it pixel because what I'm going to do, pixel, is I'm going to pixelate and pointillize um, what uh, the this image. And um, so I'm going to, I have a, a light, a light gray in the background and I'm going to put a, a yellow, bright yellowish white on the foreground and I'm going to pixelate this image to give it the look of the tiles. So filter, pixelate, pointillize. And I'm going to use 30 as the uh, pixelate or pointillize size. Ah, that's what I want. That's the kind of effect. Some green, some yellow, a little bit of orange tint. Now we're going to go to the oranges and do that one. Deselect the pairs. Go on to the oranges. Uh, so a new layer. Oranges. And the path is here. Make selection and get a nice orange in there. Nice juicy orange. Get another orange in here. And uh, now I'm going to change the orange a little bit, give a little variety as they had to this. There we go. Make one a little bit lighter. It might be just a little bit too light, but we're going to let it go for now. <laughs> that was a play. <laughs> Edit, undo, that was too light. Okay, let's get a little darker in here. Those oranges don't look so healthy. So we'll give them a little different color there. A little darker, a little richer color. I'm going to just add a little almost like shading to these by just putting a little darker tint on each one. There we go, just a little. I think this whole one is too light.
Okay, well, I could work more and more on this, um, but this is meant to be a demonstration, so let's keep it at that. And um, I'm going to duplicate that la la layer again. Uh, duplicate layer, and that's going to be orange pixel. Okay, and again, we're point to, we're going to point to wise it, and I'm going to choose a little bit lighter yellow, still gray in the background. And we're going to go back to point to wise those. Okay, there we go. So there's the oranges. Let's view that in the screen size side. There, okay, so we got the pears, we got the oranges. And now we're going to go to this uh, uh, spire that has the fruit on it, or steeple. It has a fruit on it, and there's four different fruits. I don't know exactly what they are. Uh, one's red, one's yellow, one's green and one's orange, let's assume one's orange again, one's lemon, one's lime, maybe one's a tomato, I don't know. But anyway, they're a little bit smaller than this one, so let's go into coloring that. And um, choose the path, deselect that last one, and this is going to be called fruit. And we're going to start off, why don't we start off with the lime color. Okay. Get the pencil tool out, which by the way is about uh, 70 uh, pixel width on this that I'm using. Did I? I want to make sure I'm doing this right. No, I'm not. I see I'm doing it on the orange pixel layer, I got to make a new layer. So I'm going to say edit, undo that artwork, and I'm going to start a new layer, call it fruit. Okay, now, now let's color that in, color that in on the layer. Three healthy limes on top. I think the next one I'm going to do is the lemons. And again, I don't know if they're lemons. They could be something else, but they look yellowish. Get some yellow in there. some orange
Okay, now we're going to go for tomatoes. Red. I don't know. Maybe they're apples. Red apples. Maybe that would be more appropriate. Big red apples. Okay, so now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give a little bit of shading uh, underneath these. It shouldn't take very long. I'm going to use the um, dropper tool, pick up some of the green, make that green just a tad bit darker, just to give it a little bit of shading underneath. We'll see how that is affected by when it goes into the pixel. Uh, oops, that's wrong. Yeah, when I use the filter on it, we'll see what happens in that regard. And of course, we'll pick up on some of the others a little bit too. Uh, the yellow, make that just a, a little bit deeper. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to let the orange be as it is. We're going to duplicate that layer. Call it fruit pixel. And we're going to choose a really nice light color for highlights and then gray in the background. And we're going to pointillize that. There we go. So that gives it that tile look. Uh, and we got this view it in uh, fit on screen and deselect it. Oops. Here we go. Well, that finishes up the work that I did in coloring in the inkline sketch on the software program on my computer. And I did do some changes after that. So this is uh, what the finished artwork looks like. And uh, if you are interested in purchasing either the Inkline sketches on quality archival paper or a print of the color of the Inkline sketch on archival paper or even the original Inkline sketch, you can go to my Etsy store and uh, buy it there. And the easiest way to get to that store on Etsy is to go to my website, which is Travel and Sketch. Dot com. So thank you very much for joining me on this travel and sketch adventure and next time we're going to be exploring some other areas of Barcelona and seeing some more of the wonderful work of Gaudi. Until then, have a great day.